You are listening to Hillary Topper On Air, the small business podcast to help you grow both personally and professionally. And now, here's your host, Hillary Topper. There are people who you talk with in business or just in life that you tend to bond with for no apparent reason. My next guest is one of those people. I've known Tim Healy of Healy Success Solutions and podcaster of The Profit Express for many years now. Pre-COVID, we would meet up and have business lunches. Post-COVID, we've been talking on the telephone. The one thing about this guy is that I feel like I've known him my entire life. He's excellent at what he does. And I know today's show, you will learn a lot. I'm Hillary Topper, and this is Hillary Topper on air. Tim, welcome back to the show. I think this officially goes down as my best interview introduction ever <laughs> that was that was fantastic thank you so much for the kind words and yeah it's it's we we just have this this chemistry you know when, when we chat we talk lunch, uh, talk um business over lunch we've uh We've just always had a, a great back and forth together. Absolutely. So let me ask you to remind our mm-hmm. listeners about who you are and what you do. Sure. Uh, well, as you mentioned, I own Healy Success Solutions, where my, my purpose is to help my clients turn their prospects into profits, right? That's what I get up every day doing, helping my clients turn prospects into profits. And, and I do it very simply and very directly by helping them create winning sales organizations through the power of personal communication. That's how I do it. That's what I do. And that's how I do it at Healy Success Solutions. Okay. What about your podcast? The podcast is, as you've mentioned, it's the Profit Express. Uh, it's, it's, it's like over 11 years now. And it's, I've always had a focus, obviously, you know, in, in the business side, Healy Success Solutions, I'm very focused on the sales process, everything from first point of contact to close. But when I created, the, it was started as a radio show, it still is, it's evolved into a podcast, obviously. When I created the Profit Express, I, I did decide not to be just so specific on sales, but more focused on the journey of the small business person, the entrepreneur, the startup, what they go through each and every day to win the battle for business. Because listen, Hillary, you know, it and I know it each and every day, some days it's, it's more challenging than others, uh, but it's, it's, it's a battle and mm-hmm. here to win it each and every day, each and every day to me is a competition and we're, we're competing. And it's a matter of, you know, bringing on guests to the show who can help the small business owner, who can help the startup in everything from, you know, sales and marketing and branding, uh, finance, anything and everything that can positively impact a small business owner. Because so many of them I have found, and that's been a big focus of the show, they kind of operate on an island to themselves. And I've always wanted to just be a resource for, for entertainment for education, for information, uh, for motivation, uh, as they head in the direction of success for their small business. So today we're talking about sales. And Mm -hmm. let me ask you something. And I really want you to be really serious with me about this. Okay, no kidding around. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Can everyone sell or are some people just natural salespeople? That's a, that's, that's, that's a great question. Can everybody sell? No. But the reason I say no is if, if you don't want to sell, you're never going to sell. That's probably true of most professions. And actually, you know, the people say, oh, some people are natural born salespeople. And they, they, they could be. Um, but I think there's been a misnomer over the years that, oh, you know, that, that person has the gift of gab and they can talk to anybody. Believe it or not, I've seen over the many years, 
working with my clients, helping my clients interview and recruit. Some of the sales professionals who are, have the quote unquote gift of gab, who can talk to anybody, that can make them a good networker, might not make them a good salesperson. Because, and you and I've had conversations about this, I wholeheartedly believe one of, if not the most important characteristic of a great selling professional is listening and putting the prospect first. And if you were the kind of person who's got this great outgoing personality and you're, and you're gregarious and all that, and you know what? You might, you, you might not give consideration in the conversation to mm-hmm. the other person. You, you might interrupt. You might not listen enough. And it's having the discipline to listen, to ask great questions, to have empathy for the prospect that I think can make the great salesperson. You know, that's so true. I mean, how many people do you come in contact with where they just talk about themselves? (laughs) It's all about themselves. I, well, it's, it's good because it kind of, it kind of keeps me in business to a certain extent Uh, (laughs) because when, when their businesses eventually end up not doing as well as they should, they reach out to people like me. Um, But you know what it is as you, because so much of sales is, is human nature. And you have to understand human nature in order to relate to somebody, okay? Because I, I think long gone are the days of feature and benefit selling. They're long gone. Because then you, you can't relate to and you can't understand why somebody would need your products or services. So, again, it starts with the conversation. It starts by asking great open-ended probing questions. So those people who talk about themselves or about just about the products and services, there's no connection. There's no emotional bonding whatsoever. And... You know what? I, I think it's, 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 it goes back to human nature. People like to talk about themselves. They want to show how smart they are. And again, if they don't listen, if they interrupt, they're never going to, well, I won't say never, but their, their chances of making great connections are greatly reduced. And I think somebody who's a great listener will eat their lunch every day. Now, what about if you have Okay, so you have a company and you hire a salesperson. Mm-hmm. What can you do to motivate them? I mean, you know, you and I both know that sales is tough and there's <laughs> a lot of rejection. So how do you get people to be motivated? Mm. Um, there's, well, when it comes to motivation, I'm sure your listeners are probably familiar with extrinsic reward and intrinsic. Extrinsic is the compensation, the commission, the dollars, the bonus. The intrinsic is a sense of accomplishment, you know, doing the right thing, helping a client out, right? Both are very valuable. But how do you motivate somebody? You have to, a really good sales manager, a really good sales coach has an understanding of the salesperson. And believe it or not, Sure. Is, is money a motivator? Of course it is. But it's not the only motivator. It really isn't. And if you're just going to do the carrot and the stick and, you know, for commission, you're really going to miss, I think, a lot of opportunity to increase somebody's ability to become a better salesperson. So <clears throat> you really have to understand what they want to accomplish, what they want to do. And it often goes beyond just the dollars and the commissions and the quotas. And, you know, is, is it, you know, getting to another level of relationship? Is it, you know, really just cracking onto a client or a prospect that they've gone after for years and have never made headway? That could be a huge sense of accomplishment and reward and really connecting to clients. Um, so you, you really, I think the best way to answer that is please, as a sales manager, never make an assumption that your people are only motivated by money. Is it a key driving factor? Sure, but it's not the only one. Take time to get to know your your sales team, your sales person, and you can often find out there are other things that they can relate to that can help positively impact their behavior. So let's take this one step further and look, Mm -hmm. and can you offer our listeners some tips on how, if they are a salesperson, how Mm -hmm. they can be you know, how they can be um, 
irreplaceable, irreplaceable. Is that? <laughs> no, no, th- th- that's, 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 a, that's a great question. That's, that's a great word. Think about that. In, in just about, I, I never want to say 100%, right? But in just about any industry, you've got competition in your, in your field and what you do. So do I, most of us do. Mm-hmm. Some have more competition than others. And a lot of our products, there's, you know, you know people can get across the street, okay? Um, and while you may think that you have the world's greatest products and you should absolutely think that and should be absolutely excited and pumped up about what it is that you offer, um, there are other good competitive products and services, and that's fine. So with that in mind, knowing that we are going up against competition on a daily basis, I think it, it is a great way to start off, a great mindset to develop, to, to ask yourself, how can I be irreplaceable in the mind of my client? So what does that mean to be irreplaceable? That's a big word, right? Right. Not, e- not an easy thing to do or, to, or to, to accomplish, to achieve. So typically, it goes beyond just offering and, and selling your product or service. So what can you do beyond that? What value can you offer your client beyond, you know, the exchange of money for service and, or money for a good? The better relationship that you have with the client, and Hillary goes back to listening, the more that you know about what they're looking to accomplish, the more that you can help them. And I've often said, you know, in, in becoming irreplaceable, when you get known as the guy or the gal, the go-to person, and somebody would just let, let me call Tim, maybe he can help. When a customer asks you for advice and something that you don't even offer, you know you become irreplaceable. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because then they're like, they see you as such a resource that, well, I know Tim, I know Hillary doesn't sell this, but you know, she probably knows somebody. Yep. And then even, and then if you just make a simple introduction, whether it's to a person or a resource or a book or a link or a website, and you just help that client, helped your client, that's one more opportunity became irreplaceable. And that's another chance that they remember you again in the future. So you always want to be selfless and say, what can I do to be irreplaceable? And here's one thing I, I want to share this with you. I, th- I think your listeners would love this. I like to remind myself every time I deal with a client and I, and I, try, my, I try my best to do it as, as often as humanly possible. Sometimes I forget I'm not perfect. But here's a great thing. And write this down. This is a pen and paper moment, Hillary. Remind yourself that today may be the last time you see your client. And I'm talking about a great client. I'm talking about clients you've been doing business for years. They love you. You've gone to the kid's wedding. It doesn't matter. And the reason I say this may be the last time you deal with them. It may be the last time you see them. It keeps you humble. It keeps you humble and you never take the relationship for granted because we all have, if, if you've been in the business, you're a sales professional, you have clients for years if you're doing the right thing, right? We all have clients, if you're doing the right thing, for years. Never take them for granted and remind yourself, you know what, this may be the last time I see them. So what can I do of value today for them? What can I bring different to the table? Let me not take this relationship for granted. And that's another way to put you in the place to be irreplaceable. Love that. That's awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> so before we move on, I sure. have to say that I am so appreciative of our sponsors and must take the time out to th- thank them. Please support our sponsors and tell them that you heard about us on on Hillary Topper on air. Special thanks to the Russo Law Group, the Profit Express, Pop International Galleries, Gold Bennis LLP and the Pagalis Law Group. Now back to you, Tim. So we're talking about sales, but I'd like to shift gears a little bit. <clears throat> and I want to ask some personal questions as they relate to sales. Okay. <laughs> so for starters, yeah. What did people call you when you were a little boy? Oh my God. How did you? 
This is, we've never talked about this before. We've never chatted about. Okay. So this is, I you talk about transparency and I know it's a big topic of yours and it's something you've helped me with. Okay. <laughs> I think you a lot of credit. And, uh, and, and by the way, for everybody listening to Hillary's podcast, keep listening and tell five friends because the things you can learn on this podcast from Hillary alone on branding are phenomenal. It's, 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 it's worth the, the listens. So uh, when I was a kid, so my name is Timothy Joseph. My middle name is Joseph. Oh. I always wanted to be called TJ when I was a little kid. Oh. I was called TJ and I grew out of that. Okay. The one thing... So everybody calls me Tim. I, I can't stand the word. Now, people might use this against me now. I'm exposing myself here, Hillary. <laughs> Timmy. Timmy. Yeah, I was wondering if they call you Timmy. Oh, I hate it. I, my, I did have a grandfather. May he rest in peace. He was, he was a sweetheart of a guy. He called me Timmy. I, I dealt with it because I loved him. He was a great guy. But that's the one thing I hated. But I was a little kid. It was TJ. I, I since grew out of that. Uh, so Tim is Tim is fine now. It, that, that's so. If somebody calls you Timmy in business, do you correct them? I do. I really do because I it's 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 like nails on a chalkboard. It creates <laughs> me. It creates me. <laughs> I do correct them. Yeah. <laughs> what about now? I know your your name is very easy to spell, Tim T I M. Yep. But what if someone spells your name? or wrong or mispronounces it should you say something uh yeah i, I don't think there's anything wrong with that okay it, like okay. if somebody if somebody botches your name i actually did this i won't say who she was a sweetheart of a guest i and i take great pride it's funny you should say it's take great pride in pronouncing my guest names correctly and for the, for the love of God, I don't know how I butchered this poor woman's name, her first and her last name, like three times on the show. <laughs> and she was so sweet about it. She, and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, but like, but like if somebody mispronounces it, say, hey, that's a great pronunciation. That's, I've never heard that before, but actually it's pronounced, you know, you yeah. can have some fun with it. You, you know, have some fun with it. You know, thank them for the unique pronunciation. Or you know how many times people call me and say, write down Hillary with two L's. I, I usually don't even say anything at this point, but <laughs> <laughs> this one person said to me the other day, oh, I was looking you up online and I couldn't find anything on you. <laughs> I said to him, well, maybe that's because she spelled my name with two L's. <laughs> they, they, it's, it's, it's impossible not to find Hillary Topper uh, online. It's, you're everywhere. It's impossible. <laughs> All right. So. Let me ask you another question. This is also sales related. How often is too often to close the deal? You know, for example, somebody, you have a great relationship with somebody, you meet right. somebody, they love you, you love them, you, you, you write a proposal, and then they go MIA. How often should you keep calling them or reaching out to them when they are MIA? We could do a show just on this one topic. So if, because you are, now what you did say in the setup of the question was, you know, a great relationship and all this, then you give a proposal, then they, then they go dark on you and it's MIA. Um, for that to happen, there's a, a few, a number of things you probably did not do correctly as a sales professional as far as qualifying, as far as urgency, as far as timeline, as far as decision-making process. Um, I, and, and how I do it and how I train my clients and work with my clients, you qualify, you qualify in the front end. Um, you know, really, you, you leave nothing to chance because it's on the one yard line that you get surprised in the scenario that you just described. And it's a great scenario to describe, Hillary, because so many people get kicked in the backside with this. And I get so excited about it because it can be prevented. If somebody spends a the time, they sit down, you do a meeting, you put together a proposal presentation, do yourself the favor. And it's usually just a handful of good questions. Find out how are they going to decide on this? Is there competition? What factors are they going to use? Who else is involved in a decision-making process? And by the way, there's always somebody else involved. What are they going to decide? 
okay? Is having this something you'd like to have or something you must? That's a powerful question right there. Because I, 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 you know, I, I, you don't get paid for proposals. You don't make a dime on a proposal. Mm-hmm. I want to qualify the heck out of you. Because, you know, and here's one thing I always say, Hillary. You have to earn a seat at my table. I don't deal with pipelines in sales. Okay, we've all heard of pipelines. Pipelines can be very dangerous. We just throw lots of stuff in them, hoping that they'll 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 close. It's a seat at my table, and you, Mister or Miss Prospect, have to earn a seat at my table because I know that it takes time for me to put my presentation together, and I know that there are more people in this world. Forget the world, even even just New York. I can't even. I don't have time to get to. So I have to talk to the ones who are most qualified because they deserve my time and attention. I don't uh, want to waste my time with somebody who's not qualified because it prevents me from helping somebody who really needs Healy Success Solutions. Definitely. Qualify, qualify, qualify. All right. Let's take it another route. Mm. So you're at a business meeting, you're at a lunch meeting, and, you know, the salesperson decides to show you photos of their babies or their dogs. Right. What do you say? Do you show your photos too? What does that say about them? <laughs> well, it, it's it, what it says is it's completely natural element of human nature. Everybody's favorite topic is themselves <laughs> or, or, or an extension of their children mm-hmm. or an extension of their 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 dog, their cat, the, the, their chinchilla, whatever. Um, yeah, you look at it. Oh my god, fantastic! It's beautiful. The kid, you know. Oh, what's the name? Da, 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 da. Yeah, you have fun with it. You know. Um, sh- absolutely. And th- then your next, the second part. Sh- should you show your pictures? Um, you play it by ear. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. You, you honestly, you play it by ear. Because if, if they're so engrossed in their own stuff, okay, fine. I'm here to learn about them anyhow. Right. That's my, that's my, that's my. And on that same topic where right. you're going out to lunch and mm-hmm. maybe the prospect asks you to go out to lunch, mm-hmm. who pays for the lunch? You or the prospect? Or do you go Dutch treat? <sighs> I, I, I go by, so this is how I, great question. It is never worth, even if you go to a really nice lunch and you, and you drop a hundred dollars, right. And that's, that's not that common. Right. But even if you do that, right. And you're in business, it's never worth the 50 bucks. If you split it (laughs) to make an uncomfortable moment, you you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Oh, can you believe this guy Jim wanted to go Dutch? Holy cow, <laughs> you know? Especially if you go to a diner, you know? What is it going to be? 40 bucks? <laughs> you eat it. You take it on it. Always, always, always. Because you know what they can never take away from you? Uh, you know, wow. Hey, Tim treated me lunch. He's a nice guy. Even if we don't do business. Uh, I'm a nice guy. It was worth the, the 40 bucks. <laughs> always, 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 always. And don't cry about it. Yeah. All right. So you're at a networking event and the person that you are talking with mm-hmm. is sitting there chewing gum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, what do you say to them? Do you say like, so swallow it, spit it out, or you just ignore it and walk away. A part of me would love to say, would you like a napkin? You know, because it would be funny. <laughs> um, but I would, I would ignore it. <laughs> you, you know, it just is sometimes, you know, it's, but that's, that's, that's the funny thing about business. Again, you're dealing with human nature. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of, you, 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 the one great thing is you can, I will never say I've seen it all because something's going to happen tomorrow that I haven't seen yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here's another one. So yeah. now you decide. I love these questions, by the way. You're a fantastic host. I love, <laughs> I'm having a blast. So now you are at a coffee shop and you both order cookies and milk. Right? <laughs> 
So one, one of one person, the person that you're out to lunch with, or, you know, out for cookies with is Duncan, their Oreos or chocolate chip cookies into the milk. Right. What's your reaction? <laughs> I, I think my internal reaction, which I do not share is I think cookie dunking is disgusting. <laughs> That's, that's me. My <laughs> wife, who I love dearly, she loves to dunk cookies. So you know what? This is the great thing about life. She gets to dunk her cookies, and I can be a dunkless uh, cookie. Uh, you know, I'll refrain from cookie dunking. But uh, what do you do? I mean, you're, you're sitting across from somebody dunking. You don't even know this person. You, you know what? Listen, so, some of your listeners may know me. Some, many, many, I'm sure don't. Um, I am, a, I have this, you know, I could be a little, you know, wound tight sometimes, you know, I've, I'm a type A personality sometimes. Um, as long as uh, this is how I'd answer it. As long as they didn't dunk their cookie in my milk. Hey, you know what? En enjoy life. If they decide to dunk their cookie, in my milk, then I'd have to say, wow, you know what? Can I get you another glass of milk? <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't it the oh, same? Why? Wait a second. Isn't it the same as when someone takes a fry off your plate? Oh, God. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. oh. oh, God. I, yeah, I just, I can't, I'm, I don't know if I'm. A I German. mean, yeah. in a business setting, I'm talking about not, yes. not personal. I mean, personal is not the greatest either, but right. in a business setting. But th you know what? I, I would, I would let it slide. And oh, oh okay, uh, here's our right, true story. I cannot mention the client. True story. I'm at a dinner with a, a dear client, a great client. And there's 12 of us there. It's the owner, his wife, um, one of the VPs of sales and probably about seven or eight sales guys, me. We're there. Dinner comes out. We eat dinner, dessert. And I, I was, I was, I saw, I saw an, an apple crisp pie al mode kind of thing. I'm like, oh, that, that sounds delicious. The owner's sitting next to me. He goes, what are you getting for dessert? And I tell him, he's like, oh, that sounds good. He's like, I'll have a piece. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> he's a, again, I love this guy. I can't say enough good things about him. So that's what he does. That's his thing. So the dessert comes out. The second it comes out, I dive bomb the dessert. And I want to eat as much as I can. And, and then he sees it and he goes, oh, and he grabs a piece. I'm like, okay, oh yeah, good, 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 good. And that's the last I have of it. And I just, oh, okay, I start talking and I just let it, you know, I'm done. <laughs> so I got my couple of pieces in first. I'm good. My client was happy. He went to my plate. I'm like, okay. That's Tim, this, you're, okay. you're terrific. And <laughs> you, you just, one of those people that just keep making me laugh. <laughs> So oh, thank you. Um, well, likewise, thank you. I, I want. I just want to find out how yes. people can get in touch with you and learn more about Healy Success Solutions, and also listen to the Profit Express. Well, thank you. Uh, it's he HealySolutions.com. You know, for and anything from anything and everything sales, sales management. Reach out to me, HealySolutions.com, and the show. Of course, you can follow me. Uh, on Instagram at the Profit Express, uh, at the Profit Express page on Facebook. Um, that would be great. Terrific. All right. Well, thank you again for being on the show. And I want to thank our sponsors, the Russo Law Group, the Profit Express, Pop International Galleries, Gold Venice LLP, and the Bagalas Law Group. And last but not least, I want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in each week. If you want more about this show or any other show, visit us at hillarytopperonair.com or you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Alexa, you name it, we're out there. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.